Father, thank you so much for this wonderful morning. Lord, I pray today that your word would not return to you void, but it will accomplish every purpose for which you sent it. Thank you, O oh God, for the plans you have for your children this morning. May your will be done today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. How are you this morning? Good to hear. Please turn with me to John chapter 6. We'll dive straight into the word. John chapter 6, and I want to read from verse 5. I'll be reading from the NIV version. It says, When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It will take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is the boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down, about 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed it to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did, this, he did the same with the fish. Hallelujah. If, if you've been here on a Saturday, you've seen in the foyer that this, it gets quite busy. Thanks to Auntie Jessie and the team. They, they, they do their own miracles by feeding people. Please, of course, let's, let's put our hands together for her. You see, they, they'll be feeding lots and lots of families. They've got a list of names that they work with. You know, the organization, the planning, the logistics. Sometimes you even see Darren there, like controlling things. You know, but all of this is because they're able to get the names that they're going to provide for in advance. And so the people that turn up, it's expected. But you see, in John chapter 6, verse 5, it's, it's different. Jesus and his disciples are sitting down and Jesus lifts his head up. And all he can see is the crowd of people coming towards him. You see, it says 5,000, but really, it was at least 10,000 people coming towards him. Honestly, if I wasn't a Christian, I will find it hard to believe. It's like the whole town or the whole city coming towards Jesus. How is that possible? All of them coming towards Jesus. But you see, I, I, I said, God, if I wasn't, I will find it hard to believe something like this. How come everyone is coming towards you? But that is God for you. If you can understand God, then he is no longer God. You see, I can take an apple and count the seeds in an apple, but God will take a seed and count the number of apples in that seed. That is what makes him God. He's an incredible God. And so the disciples are sitting and they see the crowd coming in. And if you see, if you read Matthew's version of this account, they say, Lord, please send them away. We don't have the capacity to deal with this guy. And so that is when Jesus turns to Philip and he says, Philip, not, not Philip, not the one sitting there. I mean, the real Philip. <laughs> he says to him, where can we get bread to buy? And Philip said, Lord, even half a year's wages, it's not enough to take care of these guys. But the Bible says Jesus said it's just to test him because he already had in mind what he was going to do. Listen, I don't know how your last week was. I don't know what lies ahead this week. I don't know how it lies ahead even in the future. But I know for sure that you serve a God who has the ability to respond to the unexpected situations that you face in life. Amen. The unexpected bills that you get. The unexpected problems. You serve a God who has the ability to do that. Amen. You serve. A few weeks ago, I, I had to fix a problem. And I calculated the thing. It was going to cost me nearly 500 pounds to fix it. And I'm thinking, this is not something I'd, I've budgeted for because it was not expected. I didn't budget for this. I said, Lord, I, I leave this to you because I, I'm not sure whether to go ahead with it or not. Then just last Sunday, I, ha I have a call from somebody. He says, and then they're talking to me. And I, they hardly call me. They say, Godfrey, I just want to bless you. Just tell me what's on your heart. I say, oh, stop it. I said, I'm serious. Tell me what's on your heart. I want to bless you. We're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then, you know, they said, you know what? I'm going to help you. I'm going to pay towards this thing that you have. You, you, you problem that you want to fix. So it's not just textbook thing. I know that God has the ability to respond to those things that happen to us that we don't even expect. He has the ability. He says, I know the plans I have concerning you. 
It says plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And so listen, if you ever find yourself in a situation whereby you don't know what to do, you don't know how to react, something that's unexpected, please, I want you to remember John chapter 6 verse 6. He already knows. He already has in mind what he's going to do. He already knows. He already has in mind what he's going to do for you. Just because you don't know doesn't mean he doesn't. You know, I cannot help but see that poster behind me. It's, it's a tour to Israel, it says, you know, which is happening in April of next year. And among some of the destinations listed on that thing, it's, it's places where Jesus literally walked. So for those of you who are going to go in April, some of you are literally going to walk where Jesus walked. But you see, walking where Jesus walked is nowhere as good as walking as Jesus walked. And so God wants us to get to a place. See, when you read stories like this, it's not God telling you that, look, I can do miracles. No, he said, I want you to get to a place where you can let your faith rise above your circumstances. So you get to a place that your faith will rise above your circumstances instead of letting your circumstances subdue you. And that's what he's teaching us. He says to Philip, where can we buy, where can we get bread to buy? And Philip is saying, Lord, even half a year's wages is not enough. Philip, this is not my question. Where, not how? And that's always been the problem. We keep worrying about how God is going to do this, how God is going to do this, how, how. He said, where can we buy? Are we buying from Asta? Are we buying from Sainsbury's? Are we buying from Morris's? Later, where, not how? And your problem, really, is always trying to rationalize and say, Lord, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? No, let me worry about the how, because if I leave the how to you, we'll be here all year. So let me worry about the how. You tell me what it is in your life that you want me to fix for you, and I'll do it, not the how. <laughs> Hallelujah. How? You know what? I remember God said to, to Abraham, he said, Sarah, your wife, will have a child. And Sarah was listening, and Sarah said, me, I'm 90. You were 100. How is that going to be? And she begins to laugh. And God said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? But of course, I can understand, because you're looking at your age. You're looking at the circumstances around you. You are listening to what people are saying. Of course, the only question that you're going to ask is how. This thing will never develop faith. And God said to Abraham, Abraham, is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for me? So sometimes we need to hear the word of the Lord instead of listening to what is happening around us. Because circumstances speak all the time. Please, let's look at 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. They speak all the time, circumstances. And so if you don't position yourself to hear the word of the Lord, you find yourself listening to things and looking at things that you are not supposed to. It says, Elisha replied, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a seer of the finest flour will sell for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of heaven, could this thing happen? You will see it with your own eyes. And said Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. He says you see it with your own eyes. You see this breakthrough with your own eyes, but you will not eat any of this. Please, let's go to verse 1 again. It says, Elisha replied. Now, you see, this, this verse, whoever wrote it could easily have said, could have started this way. This is what the Lord says. But they chose to start it, start it by saying, hear the word of the Lord. Because it's what you do with the word that is going to make a difference in your life. Hear the word, hear the word, hear the word, hear the word. Not what your situation is saying, not what the government is saying, not what the economy is saying, not what your circumstances is saying. Hear the word. Because that is what is going to make a difference in your life. And of course, I can understand the officer. Because listen, this, the Israel was, had been under siege for years. There was a lot of farming, people were dying, there was a lot of killing. And not only that, they had been surrounded by the enemy. So how is it that this thing is, God is going to change this thing? Suddenly, within 24 hours, there's going to be so much, and it's going to be so cheap. No, it didn't make sense to him. He, he begins to analyze this. He begins to question himself. Even if there is food, the enemies will come and take it. So this is not possible. And Elisha said, well, you, you will see it, but you are not going to partake of it. 
You come so close and yet so far away from your breakthrough because of the way you're analyzing things. And you know what? If you read further, it happened. He dies. He never gets to enjoy all that blessing. He dies completely. And I say, please never let your wrong analysis lead to your paralysis because it happens all the time. If you read, listen, Zachariah, the Bible, the Bible says an angel went to Zachariah and said, Zachariah, the Lord has heard your prayers. Your wife, Elizabeth, is going to have a son. Now, Zachariah is a priest. He was seven when this angel came. You've seen an angel and yet you are still doubting. If, listen, all I need is a prophet to give me a word. I don't need an angel and I'll receive it. This guy, you've got an angel right before you and you are still doubting. And he's saying, how is that going to be? How begin to analyze. You know what happened to him? You know it, don't you? Paralysis of the mouth. It was sealed and he couldn't talk. Never let your analysis, or wrong analysis, I should say, lead to your paralysis. Never. Because God has got so much in store for you. So much. So much. I don't know why this thing bothers God. But unless you learn to align yourself with God, there are certain things that you miss out in life. It's just how it works. It's simple as that. It's just how it works. You've had a dream all your life. Now I can understand uh, uh, Zachariah is old because all his life he's, he's had that dream of, of having a child. And now he's old and he's thinking this dream is gone. It can't happen. And yet one day an angel shows up and he says, heaven has heard your prayer. And he's thinking, Lord, I don't think I've got the capacity to, to have a child now. I'm old, my wife. Listen, heaven, God will never give you a dream that matches your budget. You have to understand that. He would never give you a dream that matches your budget. He said to Philip, Philip, where can we buy food or bread for these guys to eat? And Philip says, Lord, we don't have em enough money. Even half a year's wages is not enough to buy bread. He said, Philip, where can we buy bread? God is not looking at your account to satisfy his people. He's looking at your faith account, not your bank account. Because if God was to look at your bank account, believe me, the world would come to a standstill. So he's looking at your faith account, not your bank account. I saw something the other day in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. C can we go there quickly? Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Just looking at your faith, the level of your faith. He says, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So we have come to the place where everything we do is in vain. We've removed the element of faith out to the point that he's saying, if the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Where is the faith gone? How much faith do you have in your account? Will he find faith on earth? Will he? Because the way we live now, everything we do is flesh, flesh, flesh. That element of faith is gone. The slightest, it, we, we don't even pray anymore. We'd rather go to our medicine cabinet. Uh, there's nothing wrong in going to a medicine cabinet. But you need to, you see, faith grows. So you need to practice it. Until we get, don't think that when you're in big trouble, suddenly you're going to get this big faith to handle it. No, it's not going to happen. You are going to have to start from somewhere. You are going to have to start. So start with the little things. Start with the little things and let your faith grow. Start with the little things. Don't wait till it's too late. We say, where can we buy food? Where? Where can we buy food? So that is when Andrew comes in and Andrew says, five. Says, Jesus, we've got five loaves and two fish. But even that, I don't know how far it will go. I don't know. And Jesus says, we will use it. He takes the five loaves and two fish. He blesses it. And you know what happens? He feeds everybody. Everybody there gets fed. But here's the thing, guys. When Andrew brings the five loaves and two fish, now, Jesus doesn't say anything. Is it possible that that's the plan he always had, that he was going to use the five loaves and two fish? W was that always his plan? Was that always? Because if he was, then that little boy didn't have a clue that that day God was going to use what he has. He didn't have a clue. You are, you will be amazed what God can do in you and through you if you give yourself to him. You'd be absolutely amazed what he can do. Is it possible that that was his plan? 
He woke up that day, didn't know that his five loaves and two fish was about to go to a whole new different level. He didn't know that. And I know without a shadow of doubt, there are people here in this room, at the sound of my voice, that God has another level with your name on. But the only way, hallelujah, you see, you clap, you clap, but that level will need your faith to access it. It won't just happen. But I have no doubt that he's got another level with your name on. But you need your faith to access it. You say, how? Every single person in Jerusalem, I believe God is giving you a gift, a talent, an ability. God, every single person in this room, you have something that God has given you. So please, you know, when, when this guy, when he brought the five flutes, this guy wasn't even counted in the crowd. His name isn't even mentioned, yet what he brought was significant. Please don't ever think what you have to offer is insignificant in this house. Never ever think that somebody somewhere, the world needs what you have to give. So never ever think what you have is insignificant. And so if you're here and you're already doing something in the house, God bless you. But if not, find something and do. You never know. Maybe your breakthrough is tied to that thing. You never know. I'll never forget when a prophet said to me, I used to be in the sandbox. A prophet said to me, your breakthrough is tied to that sandbox. So you never know. I'm not saying yours is the same, but I won't be surprised if it is. Find something. Do something. You'd be surprised. I, I heard a story about a guy who died and he went into heaven. And then he saw a mansion. And as he was walking with the angels, he asked one of the angels, who does this mansion belong to? And the angel said, there's a lady, an old lady in your church. And all she does is come early and clean. And he went back. And he said, is that the result of cleaning? This big mansion. You never know the waves, what, the waves of what you're doing in, in, the, in the realms of heaven. So find some, it doesn't, from cleaning to clergy, God has something for everybody. He has something for everybody. And you see, when you read Matthew's account, you know, the disciples say, let's send the crowd away. Let's send them away. Jesus said, no, you feed them. Now let me ask you a question. This crowd, they, they, are not, like, they were not expecting them. So for me, I don't have a problem at all if they send them away. Because we, we are not prepared for 10,000. There's a lot of mouths to feed. So we are not prepared for them, so let them go. At least, you know, they can find something to eat. Just because we are not prepared for them doesn't mean they are not prepared for us. After all, the, 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 the boy had some, some loaves and fish, so some of them, I'm sure, may have come in prepared. But then when they suggest that, Jesus said, no, let's feed them. So what I want to say to you this morning, listen, not every solution to your problem is a God solution. Just because it works doesn't mean it's God's solution. God can open doors. Man can open doors. The enemy can open doors. So make sure you go through the right doors. Because if you want your breakthrough, make sure the solution you are getting is the solution God endorses. Not just any solution at all. And that's why he says, trust me with all your heart and lean not on your own, own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct you. So a solution in your eyes may be good, but is it a God solution? Is it, is it a God solution? Because unless it's a God solution, your breakthrough is not going to come. Because you won't make sure the solution is this one. And it's not hard. Just come to God and ask him. Come to him and ask him. Samuel began to hear God's voice when he was, he was even sleeping when God spoke to him. So we shouldn't struggle hearing God's voice. And God speaks in so many different ways. Once you pray about something, begin to expect the answer. Begin to expect the answer. It could come from anybody or anything. And I've shared it so many times before. I remember one day I came to church. My goodness. I came to church. I was so down. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. And I wasn't getting the answer. And I left church. And I remember very well that day, Arsenal and Chelsea were playing. And I thought, you know what? Let me just go to the pub, not too far from where I live, and watch the game. And as I'm sitting there waiting for the game, this guy, drunk guy, had so much to drink, came to sit by my side. He was just talking and talking and talking. And I'm thinking, good, why did I even take this sport? And I thought, you know what, let me just get away from this guy. But I, I decided to stay. I sat there. And then the guy who was talking and talking, suddenly he became quiet. Then he tapped me. So I turned. And you know what he said? He said, God said it will be okay. This is somebody who is drunk in a pub. So listen, 
you, you, once you pray about something, be prepared to hear what God. I mean, God uses donkeys. He uses don- like, honestly, once you never know. You never know. We are all children of God, and God, He wants to talk to you more than even you want to hear. He really wants to. It's not that complicated. He really wants to. We try to complicate it. It's not. He really, really wants to. Listen, Jesus said, in this world, you have problems. But take heart, I've overcome the world. He says, I have overcome the world. If you live in Christ and he lives in you, once he has overcome, it means you too, you have overcome. It means you have overcome. You see, sometimes problem, when we go through problems, God can use problems to direct you. And so not every problem is a bad problem. God can use problems to direct. Some people will never come to church. Some people will never pray. Some people will never, some people will not do anything until they are, they are, they are in trouble. And so until they are in trouble, that is how God can guide them through that problem. You see, the woman with the issue of blood, she said, if only I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I know I'll be made well. And, and I've wondered so many times, if you knew that touching the hem of Jesus' garment will make you well, why wait so long? Why were you going to physician after physician? Why didn't you just go? And sometimes we wait till the problem becomes worse before we start crying on to God. Whereas we can do it straight away. And so problems, honestly, sometimes God uses problems to direct you. Look at James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3, please. I'll show you something. James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Why on earth will I consider it pure joy? <laughs> no, you tell me why. When I'm going through, why on earth? Unless at the end of the problem, there's something good. Others, why will I consider it pure joy? I'm not. Pastor or no pastor, I won't consider it pure joy. I won't. Unless there's something at the end of this thing. And it reminds me so much of Job, you know. Job went through so many trials, so many afflictions. He went through so many things. So many things. And yet this guy, when he first hear that all this negative news, everything that is happening, losing his, his children, losing his property, losing all of them, the first thing this guy does is begin to worship God. Doesn't complain, doesn't moan, doesn't do anything. And the thing about Job is that guy was a righteous guy according to God. He was a righteous guy. I mean, he, he would dot his eyes, cross his teeth. He would make sure he's always in step with God, never missing his step. And yet, he had to go through trials. He had to go through trials. Guys, listen to me. In, in life, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed in life. But life always comes with possibilities and opportunities. It doesn't matter who you are or where. Life always comes with possibilities and opportunities. That trial that Job went through, Gave him the opportunity or gave God the opportunity to bless him a double portion. So it's never the problem. It's how sometimes you handle the problem. That, that's the problem. Philip, where can we get bread to buy? Where can we get bread to buy for these people? Philip said, we don't have enough money to do this. And then Andrew shows up with five loaves and two fish. Now here's what I want to say. Let's just assume, let's just assume that maybe it wasn't God's plan that the five loaves and two fish was what he was looking for. I mean, like, like I won't put anything past God because he's got a million ways to provide for people. So what is to say that with the five loaves and two fish was what he was planning anyway? It could be that that's, that wasn't what he was planning. But the faith that Andrew had, that five loaves and two fish set the rules of heaven in motion just for his sake. You know, it's happened so many times. Look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 23, I think. I'll show you something there. You never know what your faith can do. You see, every accomplishment in life starts with your decision to try. You have to start from somewhere. You have to start somewhere. It said, can we go to 22, please? Matthew 15, 22. It says, a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. 
Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to a woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Jesus didn't have any plans to take care of that woman. She didn't have any plans. But that woman's faith set into motion something. It doesn't matter how small it is. So what is, what, how much faith do you have in your faith? Do you even have a faith account? Do you have one? Because it's the only way when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, he said, I feel that something has left me. So you know, you draw on it when the time comes. Do you have an account? That, that thing that Andrew did set into motion something. Something that probably God wasn't even planning. But you see, he says without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so when he sees his children walking in faith, it pleases him. And he grants them what they want. Your faith, your faith, faith, faith. Faith is a mystery. I, I can never explain faith. Except I don't know what it is about faith that moves God. It's not your crying. It's not your tears. It's not, it's not, it's just faith. Faith, faith, faith. We cannot live without it. And he's saying, if the son of man come, comes, will, still, will he still find faith on earth? Will he still, will he still find faith on earth? Will he? I've always said, I've always said, what my money cannot do, my faith will do for me. And I've seen it so many times. That thing, that five loaves and two fish, stretched over what, 10,000 people. Money has limitations, but faith has it. Money has limitations, faith has it. And he wants his children to step up. Look, every time, everything that Jesus did, he also did it out of faith. Don't forget when he was operating, he was operating as man, not God. Look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10, please. Jeremiah. It says, this is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. The next verse, please. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future plans to give you hope. This thing still applies today. The God you serve is not an irresponsible God. Believe me, it's a very responsible God. It says, I know the plans I have for you. You see, when Jeremiah wrote this prophecy, he wrote it for the children of Israel who were in captivity in Babylon. 70 years in captivity. Daniel was part of that group. And so when that 70 years was getting near, Daniel began to pray. Standing on this word that God had given them, he began to pray, Lord, your word says after 70, 70 years, you set us free because you, you, you know the plans you have for us. He was praying and fasting and praying and fasting. And you know what the Bible says, if you read, if you read the book of Daniel, the Bible says, God responded to Daniel and said, Daniel, as soon as you started praying, the answer was released, but the prince of Persia, which is a demon, would help me for 21 days. 21 days. So I had to send one of the chief princes, Michael, to come and fight to release the answer. You know, it's because of what the devil saw that God is bringing hope to his people. God is giving a future to his people. The devil is not attacking you because of your past. The reason the devil is attacking you is because of your future. That's the only reason. He's attacking you. It's because of your future. And if he can't destroy your future, he will delay it. And that's what he was trying to do. He would delay it. He would delay it. He would delay it. He would delay it. But you see, there's no gate that the God you serve cannot open. There's no gate that he cannot open. May God break every delay your experiences right now in Jesus' name. May he break it. 
I want to invite you to stand on your feet. See, delay is a big problem for many people. For all sorts of, all sorts of delays. But I pray that from today, that thing will end in Jesus' name. Because he knows the plans he has for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to bless you. Plans to give you hope. So you cannot be a child of God and be hopeless. Because it's part of his plan for your life. You cannot. You cannot. You need to resist and reject anything that's outside of his word for you. And so we hear the word of the Lord today. Hear the word of the Lord today. Hear the word of the Lord today. If you ever find yourself in any situation that looks hopeless, use this scripture. Stand on it. If you think you are experiencing a gloomy future, use this scripture. Stand on it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift your children before you. Thank you that your word is not just for information. It's just so that we can also be transformed. Lord, I pray that your word which has come out today should not return to you void, but it should accomplish every purpose for which you sent. Let it accomplish every purpose, O oh God. Deliver your children, O oh God, from any form of captivity they may find themselves in. Lord, set them free, O oh God, and put a new song in your mouth, O oh God, and a testimony, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let them sing, oh God, a song of joy to you because of what you've done for them, oh God. Let the world know that they have a father like you, oh God. And just like, Lord, you turn many situations around in the Bible, I pray that you do the same for your children today, oh God. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Guys, you know, nobody likes delay, but there's one thing that you cannot delay with or about. That's when it comes to giving your life to Jesus Christ. So if you are here, if you are here, and you know you don't have a relationship with Jesus, there are people here who will be willing to help you and talk with you and pray with you. I would like, I would invite you to lift up your hands so that we'll see wherever you are. Or even if you're here and you know that your walk with God is not the way you want it to go and you need help, lift up your hands. There will be people to pray with you and guide you. You are in the house of God. Be free. This is the place of transformation. And that's why God has brought you here. I thank you so much, Father. I thank you for what you've begun in the lives of your children. Thank you, God, that you who have started a good work will bring it to completion. I give you all the glory, Father, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. We hope it ministers to you and blesses you throughout the week and further along. Have a blessed weekend. God bless.